Good morning. Well, okay, uh, so-so morning? Oh, anyway. Uh, oh, here's Charlie here. I'm glad to see Charlie here because... <gasps> Charlie, what are you doing? Here. <laughs> what are, you're, you're spreading all these germs, Charlie. Yeah, yeah but I, I wouldn't be here. And <laughs> um, this is terrible. One person could make all of us sick. But, of course, then maybe one person. Here, now we put this on our hands, and then we try to, uh, and then we, uh, and uh, maybe you have to see a doctor too, but, oh, we'll see, one person can also help us. So if one person can make us sick, well, one person, like going to a doctor, can make us well too. Also, there is... You guys are ugly. What? Yeah, I mean, look at them. Ugh, they're just ugly, terrible. I mean, what are they even doing here? They should not be here. They're just terrible, ugly, they're mean, they're just, look, they don't even behave well. Look, oh, and then they try to smile. Yeah, I know, really. You can't smile and make yourself look any better than that. No, no, you guys are ugly, 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 ugly. That's terrible. One person can really make us feel bad, and one person, but understand, you really are nice, and I like you, and you really are good kids. Oh, one person can make us feel bad, but one person <coughs> can make us feel good, too. This is how it goes. Oh, but then there's the story of what one person, and actually one man and one woman, did in the Garden of Eden, where there was the tree they were not to eat of, but did they listen to the God who spoke, or did they listen to the serpent, and then they ate the forbidden fruit? And you know what happened then? Then came the rule of, and of Satan and the curse of sin and death. From one man and one woman came death. And um, I don't know that I can do anything about that. I mean, this is not going to help you from dying. I can't do anything. Well, now we're in a pickle. We say that, well, one person can bring really terrible things to us. Like one person can cough all over us and make us sick. One person can say terrible things and make us feel bad. But now we have one person, one man, one woman, who has made us so that we are under a curse and will die. Can one person do anything about that? There's a big picture in this church, and it's up there on the wall. Can you see the picture of Jesus on the cross? He was one person, and what this one person did was save us from the power of sin, death, and the devil himself. And therefore, we give thanks to this one person who was uh, Jesus of Nazareth, but also the King of kings and Lord of lords. So, one person can do that for us. And to remind you of what this one person did, on the cross, I have a package I can't open. Uh, oh, wait, here it goes. Okay. I have a little cross that you can set in its stand. And I think it is, well, you're going to have to find out. You've got to take this home and find out if it will glow in the dark. I don't know, but you'll have to test it out and check when you turn off the lights at night, see if this will glow in the dark for you. Because this will be a reminder of what one person has done. Everybody get one?
Okay, thanks for coming up. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father, from our Lord, from our Savior Jesus, who is the Christ. Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Is that spoken to you? Or is it to be, depart from me, you cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for for the devil and his angels. Which are you? Sheep or goat? That is a frightening question. Even those who say, oh, there is no God. Even those who claim, well, a loving God or any God that I could love would not create and prepare an eternal fire for the devil, his angels, and all the goats. A protest against God by atheist always centers on this one topic, a dislike for any God who will separate sheep from goats. Because there is an unanswered, very existential question in that thing. Which am I? Am I a sheep or am I a goat? When the question is left unanswered, by God, well, then it's up to us to answer it by ourselves, by what our actions will prove us to be. So, have you fed the hungry? Have you welcomed the stranger? Have you visited the sick and those in prison? And did you do so sufficiently? Sufficiently so that you did not miss Jesus. Sufficiently so that when you meet Jesus on his throne, he will say, hey, I remember you. You visited me when I was in prison. Or Jesus will say, you know, you clothed me. You dropped off those clothes to LSS and the next thing you know, I, they came to me. But did you do so sufficiently? What if instead the Son of Man will say to you, Oh, you missed me. I was the one that you missed, and that was me. After all, you did not do it to one of the least of these. You did not do it to me. Remember when you filled your home with homeless people? My goodness, you had every bedroom full. You had the sofa sleeper full. You had cots set up in the family room. And then when I came to the door... You had to say, I'm sorry. I'm all full. You're not welcome. So that you did not welcome me or clothe me or feed me. So now as judge, I must say to you, well, I'm equally sorry, but you're one of the goats. Who knew? Who knew that that telemarketer who interrupted you at, during mealtime for you to donate was, yeah, the Lord. Who knew that that hitchhiker you drove by was, yes, the king of the universe. What a dilemma. How can you make oneself to be a sheep? How do you know when you've done enough to become a sheep? Because if you miss just one, if you fail in just one category, so that you go and you visit every single person in every single prison in every single country in the world, so that, well, you lack the time to feed every hungry person in the world, well, you failed. We, of course, go, <laughs> that's ridiculous. It's impossible. We immediately, of course, are putting our interpretation upon the story. Jesus must mean, well, just do your best. It must be that, well, do your best and grace will do the rest. Jesus must mean, well, just prove your good intentions. Do what's reasonable. 
so that, well, there's this thing called grace. And that just sort of lowers the bar. It lowers the requirements so that grace, you have to reread the story. And Jesus will answer, well, since you made a concerted effort to do it to at least one, uh, I don't care that you didn't do it to me. Well, that would solve the dilemma, would it not? There would be no pinch from the story. There would be no guilt from the story. Such a gracious twisting of the story would make it kinder and gentler, and it would keep you from feeling as if, well, you were sunk. But I would, you would expect me to say unfortunately, but actually it's fortunately, the story of Jesus does not have such an escape clause. There is not a gracious twisting of this story. No, Jesus is very blunt. He is very literal in what he is saying, and it really comes down to one message. You are sunk. The gospel of grace does not give some special dispensation from this story. It is not that you get a note that says, please excuse Hugh from the demands of uh, giving to the thirsty and coming to those in prison because, well, he's only human. And, of course, it's humanly impossible for him to do so. Exactly. That is precisely the problem that Jesus' story of the last judgment seeks to expose and lift up. You are human. You are sinful and fallen human. You are born under the curse of Adam and Eve, so that, depart from me, you cursed, aptly applies to you. It's clear, even if you seek to live by the ways of a sheep, you're a goat. You were born a goat, you are a goat, you are stuck being a goat because you are stuck in your sin. Meaning, it is impossible for you to fulfill the requirements to earn your sheep ranking in life. Even if you manage to fulfill the visitation merit badge, even if you do the feed the hungry merit badge, you can't do them all. All the time. Therefore, the title the rank that is placed upon you, who are only human, is goat. And goats receive, depart from me, you cursed. So, are you sufficiently frightened? Are you sufficiently worried? Good. Now God's word is working upon you. Now God's word of law has done precisely what God intends it to do to all who hear it. God's word of law is supposed to create within you that, uh-oh, that, uh, I think I'm sunk. The uh-oh is the last judgment. When we focus on which we are, instead of focusing on who is bringing the last judgment. When you focus on which am I, am I sheep or goat, what it does is drive you deeper and deeper into yourself to try and prove that you are a sheep and you're not the goat you are. You now strive to, re, you know, to do every requirement on your own by your strength and your own inner goodness that you try to dwell up somewhere within you. But eventually, all you are left with is to plead for mercy, as we do every Sunday in the liturgy, in the Kyrie. Lord, have mercy. We sing that four or five times. What this does is shift our focus. It repents us. It turns us from looking to ourselves and going, well, how good am I? Am I really have enough sheep qualities over my goat qualities? Uh, no, it completely wipes that out and it says, here, Jesus, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. You see, the one who comes to judge the nations has already previously come. 
to take the sins of the world upon himself, the sins of all the goats, and then to die with those sins and simply to declare, you are forgiven. And that means you are now my sheep. First it's spoken at your baptism, but then it's spoken every time the Holy Spirit gathers you together around his word and Jesus speaks his gracious word of gospel, which says, I forgive you. You're a sinner. You're full of sin, but I forgive you. You're a goat, but I declare to you, you're one of my sheep. Notice what Jesus' gracious word of gospel doesn't do is tamper with the law. The law just stands there. See, this, this is what some church bodies are so confused about today. They don't understand law and gospel. And so Jesus' gracious word doesn't say, well, you know, you're only human, so do the best you were created to be. No. You are born under the curse of Adam and Eve. You are born a goat. Apart from Jesus Christ's regenerative word of the forgiveness of sins, you will die and be judged a goat. But listen, here, this is what we gather for every time, to hear God's word that says, you are not a goat. For Jesus Christ was sent to die for you, and he took all your goatiness upon himself so that then he can say, I'm the good shepherd, and you are one of my sheep. This is what we come to worship for, our ears open to hear this one word. You're not a goat. You're one of my sheep. Because when we go forth and live in the world, well, we, we keep looking at ourselves and we keep going, I still have all this goat quality within me. I mean, my goodness, I haven't, I, I did not pick up that hitchhiker. My goodness, you know, there was this person and I just uh, blew him off. I was not uh, ready to help them. The promised judgment always comes. When you look at yourself, you find that, well, I'm goaty. That's why you can't look at yourself, but you must be repented to turn and look at the one who has died for you and says, you're my sheep. This is Jesus' doing. It is not your own. And in fact, every time you try to do it yourself, well, you're going to run into one problem. You're a goat. And you will act and behave like a goat. When you stand before the judge on the final day, who will it be? Will it be the one who suddenly comes as judge? Or will it be the one whom you already have been in relationship with because he came and took your sins and died with your sins on the cross and has said to you already, well, I, I know who you are, but still I am your Savior and your Lord and you now are one of my sheep. See, the who that is telling this story is so important because he actually does the separating beforehand. You notice that he already separates the sheep and the goats. He knows them, and then he tells them why. And it's because, well, you didn't do to me. You didn't do to me. Well, the ones who are the goat or sheep are, are perplexed. They're going, we never saw you, uh, and we don't remember. It. We had no concerted effort to visit everybody in prison. And he goes, no, you visited me. You did unto me because you're in relationship with him. He has brought you into relationship as shepherd and sheep. As you live as sheep, you are doing for the shepherd. But if you're not in relationship with him, you have no idea who you're doing it for. Then he can look and say, well, you didn't do it for me. And you go, well, I, I did it for 100,000 people. Well, you missed me. It's do it to me. And it comes out of the relationship that he establishes as he is your shepherd, always declaring unto you, you are my sheep. The judgment always hangs over us. And the judgment is always there every day as we go forth in the world and we look at ourselves and you know who is the harshest judge of your life. The harshest judge of your life is yourself. Everybody else go, oh, you know, you're a nice person, good person. You go, 
Oh, if only you knew me. If only you knew what my thoughts are. If only you knew why I do what I do. We know ourselves. And we know one thing. We're goats. That's why that word has to disappear. That word we keep talking to ourselves, which is the word of Satan himself. And we need that word that doesn't come from within us. It comes from outside us. As it is coming to you today from some guy dressed weird standing in a pulpit going, you are sheep. Why? Because Jesus has died for you and Jesus has taken your sins and he has said, you are my sheep. And you go, well, I sure look like a goat. I still act like a No, listen. You are his sheep. You are the sheep of his fold. You are the sheep that are in his pasture because Jesus has said so. You're going to call Jesus a liar? Go right ahead. But Jesus still comes to you and says, you're my sheep. You are of my fold. I am your shepherd. And I give to my sheep eternal life. Hear the word of the Lord. It is what makes you sheep, not your actions. Amen.